An apocalyptic explosion, thousands of trees snapped like matchsticks, an explosive force equivalent to hundreds of Hiroshima bombs, yet no crater has been found to this day. The Tunguska event of 1908 is one of the greatest mysteries in the history of science. But now there are new insights into what really happened in Siberia back then. We take a look at the current theories, talk about spectacular simulations, and clarify how likely another apocalyptic event from space is. Stay tuned until the end, it'll get exciting. Warm welcome everyone. Imagine it's a normal morning in 1908. Somewhere in the Siberian wilderness, far away from civilization, the sun is rising. Herds of reindeer graze peacefully, birds chirp, and the permafrost freezes. A day like any other in the taiga, and then a bright light in the sky, a deafening bang, a shockwave so powerful that it can still be felt 500 kilometers away. And before we take a closer look at what happened there, why not subscribe to the channel? It costs nothing, you'll never miss a video again, and you'll be helping me out a lot. And if you're already subscribed, you can help the video a lot by giving it a thumbs up. Thanks guys! On June 30th, 1908, something exploded with immense force over the Tunguska River in Siberia. Scientists estimated the explosive power to be somewhere between 3 and 30 megatons of TNT. For comparison, the Hiroshima bomb had about 15 kilotons. Tunguska was therefore at least 200 to 2,000 times more powerful. The explosion toppled trees over an area of more than 2,000 square kilometers as if they were matchsticks. Strangely enough, a few tree trunks remained standing right in the center. Their branches had been stripped away, some with traces of extreme heat. In the settlement of Vanavara, 65 kilometers away, doors and windows were blown in, and seismographs around the world recorded the tremors. And the craziest thing about it, to this day, no crater has been found. No large debris, no clear meteorite fragments. So what the hell happened there? The British astrophysicist Professor Alan Harris, who has been researching asteroids for over 30 years, and the DLR, the German Aerospace Center, reveal the following. The data is sparse, and it's not easy to draw conclusions from it, but something very dramatic must have happened. Before we take a look at the possible explanations, go ahead and write your own theory in the comments. What do you think happened back then? I'm really looking forward to the discussion in the comments. The most obvious explanation is, of course, an asteroid impact. When such a celestial body enters our atmosphere at high speed, it builds up enormous pressure. As the pressure increases, the temperature rises dramatically, culminating in a massive explosion. This would indeed fit with all the phenomena described by eyewitnesses at the time, but here's the problem. An asteroid about 50 meters in diameter. That would be necessary to trigger an explosion of this magnitude. It should actually leave fragments on the ground and form a crater. And so far, nothing has been found. That's why researchers have developed other theories. Maybe it was a comet. Comets consist largely of ice, solid carbon dioxide, and dust. A comet has a weaker structure than an asteroid and would burst very early after entering the Earth's atmosphere, says Alan Harris. That would explain the missing crater, but many researchers are skeptical because a comet would probably not last that long on its way down to the ground, but would have to burst much higher up. There is even a wild theory that it could have been a volcanic-like eruption of natural gas. German astrophysicist Wolfgang Kunt suggested that more than 10 million tons of natural gas could have escaped from underground reservoirs through cracks in the ground. Spectacular, but not very convincing. Harris doesn't consider this idea completely impossible, but says, At this point in time, most of the evidence still points to an asteroid impact. And now things are getting really exciting. In 2020, Russian researchers from the Kerensky Institute of Physics presented a new hypothesis. The idea? The Tunguska asteroid might have entered the atmosphere at an extremely shallow angle and then exited it again. You can picture it a bit like skipping a pebble across the surface of water. The object would have essentially bounced through our atmosphere, triggered this massive explosion, and then disappeared back into space. Alan Harris considers this theory possible, but unlikely. According to the study, it would have had to be an iron asteroid to be resilient enough for such a maneuver. The problem with this idea is that metallic asteroids are very rare, Harris points out. 3-5% to of all known asteroids have the necessary composition. Another explanation is provided by Dr. Thomas Müller from the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics. Current space missions to asteroids show that they are often just loose accumulations of porous rock material. If the material is very porous, not a single large fragment would come down when entering the atmosphere. The object would more or less pulverize, explains Müller. That would mean the asteroid was basically torn to dust in the air. 
That's why there was no crater and no large debris. In 2013, there was a similar event, albeit much weaker, the Chelyabinsk explosion, also in Siberia. Here you can see the crazy original footage. A meteor about 20 meters in size exploded over the city, injuring 1,500 people and damaging over 7,000 buildings. It was a much smaller object than in Tunguska, but with very similar effects and phenomena, and this time, meteorite fragments were also found. This event inspired NASA researchers Daryl Robertson and Donovan Mathias to develop a new computer model that simulates atmospheric explosions of celestial bodies. And they also recalculated Tunguska using this model. The result? The object must have been 50 to 80 meters in size, and the explosion occurred at an altitude of 5 to 15 kilometers. Our simulation shows that many meteors could have caused the pattern of tree upheaval, including both typical rocky asteroids and typical short-period comets. In many of these atmospheric explosions, no fragments reach the ground, which is consistent with the absence of an obvious crater in Tunguska, the researchers report. In fact, the researchers even consider a stony meteorite to be more likely than a comet. A comet would have had to be unrealistically stable at a shallow entry angle, and a steep angle does not match the typical trajectories of comets. The good news, such an event is extremely rare. While it was previously thought that Tunguska-like explosions occurred every few hundred years, new calculations estimate an interval of one to two and a half millennia. So we don't have to wake up every morning worrying that an asteroid will explode above our heads today. The bad news is, of course, that it can't be ruled out. And David Morrison of NASA Ames Research Center urges vigilance. Tunguska is the largest cosmic event experienced by modern humanity, and it is characteristic of the type of impact we are most likely to need to protect ourselves against in the future. By the way, there is also an extremely speculative hypothesis about the Tunguska event that has been repeatedly discussed among experts. A primordial black hole that may have penetrated the Earth. Such mini black holes are remnants from the early universe and would have the mass of a mountain the size of an atom. As it passed through the atmosphere, it could have generated an enormous burst of energy, and when it exits on the opposite side of the Earth, a second signal. However, there is no measurable evidence for this idea, neither seismological nor geological. That's why the majority of scientists still consider this idea to be very unlikely. I also think it's rather far-fetched, but of course I would find it extremely cool if the Earth had actually ever been pestered by a mini black hole. The Tunguska event therefore remains a mystery, but the asteroid theory is definitely the most plausible explanation. A 50 to 80 meter wide chunk of rock exploded at an altitude of about 10 kilometers and was completely pulverized. This explains both the enormous destruction and the absence of a crater. Other opinions are always acceptable. That's why I'm very curious to hear what you think. I'll keep you updated on any further findings about Tunguska. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel now, and don't forget to give a thumbs up so we can hit 5,000 likes. Thanks everyone! And speaking of mysterious objects in places where they don't belong, scientists have recently discovered an extremely curious object on Mars that, according to the researchers, does not belong there. They are certain that this thing did not come from Mars. But how the hell did it get to the red planet? The explanations are truly fascinating, and I've broken down the whole story for you. Click on the video in the top right corner. It's very exciting. As always, you'll find another video about science and space in the bottom right corner. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.